Howdy everyone, Pete Daddy here. The player objective cards just keep rolling. Today it's another Premier League player with this 89 rated Ruben Nevis, and that is worthy of the Whopper button. Tell the crew to push the Whopper button. I'm going to go over the best way, the fastest way, share with you a squad that you can use to dominate this challenge. But before we begin, if you are new here, please make sure to subscribe down below. I'd really appreciate it. So Ruben Nevis is now the new option, and it's also great to see that he is 89 rated because our last one we got just a week or so ago, this Benedetto was only 88 rated. So even if you complete this one, it's nice that you'll have 89 rated Nevis for fodder later in the year. I do think they could have maybe boosted him just a little bit more, but still with the links, he's Portuguese. If you got a Bruno Fernandes, if you've got a Cancelo, a Bernardo Silva, or if you need to link him to other leagues with CR7, and Renato Sanchez or something like that. He's going to offer some great links, but let's just go over the grind right here. The first one win 15 matches using only Premier League players in the starting 11. So, and this is a managerial masterpiece. For those of you who have been grinding these objectives for a while, you'll know managerial masterpiece well, but you can only take a 77 rated squad out there. So even if you have the best Premier League squad out there with what would it be? Team of the year or foot freeze, Mane, and the best Rashfords. You know, you can only pick maybe one or two of those to take out there, but I'll share with you a team that you can use to help you beat these challenges. The next one is score 30 goals using Premier League players. So as you get your 15 wins, you should also get your 30 goals. The next one, assist 20 goals. Same thing with Premier League players, I should mention. So score 30 goals, assist 20 goals. Over the course of the 15 matches, you are going to get these knocked out no problem. The next one, this is the one I'm not as excited about. Assist from across using Premier League players in four separate matches. And the only reason I don't like this is that it makes it a little bit harder sometimes when you've got to try to force in crosses. Sometimes it seems like you just send in this cross and it's a beautiful header and you're like, oh my gosh, crosses are working. Then the next match, it seems like you send in four perfect crosses right on the head of someone. They fly over the bar, they fly wide, then you do like a low driven cross and that's a one real effective way to do it. Low driven crosses holding in the R1 or RB button the whole time. Power up your cross pretty good. Three or four bars of power. Sends that just like fast cross. And sometimes they meet it with a volley. But sometimes it seems like the keeper saves them. So they're just inconsistent, which is why I, I'm not a big fan whenever I see crosses out there. And it kind of makes you change your gameplay or game style. And that's, that's one thing I don't like. I prefer objectives where you can just play the game. You know, like scoring goals is fine. Assisting goals is fine. You just play your game. But when you start adding in crosses. But I will say if you have any problems getting into crosses, pause the game message your opponent say hey can I get some acrosses or if you concede a goal you know let's be nice to each other if I move my keeper and concede a goal that's kind of the universal symbol of hey I'm let's trade some goals or I'll give you the win just let me score and knock out a couple objectives so just kind of keep that in mind as well so the only bad thing is is in four separate matches it's not just four uh, assists from cross so you've got to do this four separate times and like the next one, score a finesse goal using Premier League players in six separate matches. This one's not as hard, but it's frustrating because sometimes you want to get into that finesse goal position. So to do a finesse goal, you hit RB or R1, hold it down while you press the shoot button, and it kind of does that side-footed action, curving it around the keeper. The where I have the most success with this is just basically... Anytime you can just kind of put it around the keeper, you know, you can be three feet in front of the keeper, you can be outside of the box. So, I mean, there's lots of different areas you can do it from. You just need to be in that area where it's kind of on your player's strong foot, and then they can just do that little bit of side foot goal around there. It's just more something to keep in mind because I don't always use the finesse goal, but sometimes when you've got that great shot in the box, you just remember to hit the RB, R1 button before you get that tap in or anything like that should count as a finesse goal for you. Let me show you a team. Well, let me mention we can also combine this slightly with some of these other challenges. So if you want to do Rainier, then that's going to be something epic for you because you can put Rainier on the bench. And this is going to be perfect because now we can combine this with Fofana. I've been waiting for something like this. I've got so much left to do on Fofana. And one of the hardest challenges on Fofana, let's see. Well, this one is one, scoring 16 separate matches using French players. But also, where's the one where it's like you have to, he has to be in your starting lineup or something like that? Or is it this one? I've done got confused on this. It's been like two weeks. I've been waiting for something on Fofana. Score in six. Okay, so this is the one. He has to be in your starting squad. 
So Fofana, so for Benedetto, he couldn't be in your starting squad. If you're doing the new Air Divisi Challenge, Fofana couldn't be in your starting squad. Now Fofana can be in your starting squad. So that's going to make a huge difference. We're going to be able to grind towards Fofana. So I highly recommend if you have not completed Fofana now, we're going to combine Fofana with Ruben Nevis, which helps to make this more worthwhile. So we're going to get 89 Nevis. We're going to get 86 Fofana, 84 Fofana. And then I think I've already gotten the 78 or the 82 Fofana. So it may pay off the most once you get to like that 84 Fofana, but just kind of putting that out there, you definitely want to try to, to mix and match those so that you can knock out both of those at the same time. But let me show you the team that I've created here to help you knock it out. And the first team I'll show is just kind of always like to give you teams that, you know, if you just picked up FIFA yesterday, this is a team that you can come out with be competitive with, but there's it will and we'll tweak it from there. But want to point out we've got Alan St. Maximum because one thing if you didn't notice from the Fofana objective, I just pointed out, but you have to score in 16 separate matches with French players. So St. Maximum is going to be great for that role. You could also use, I'll also point this out here. I've got Rodrigo, but I also wanted to point out there's another great Premier League French striker that will fit into this team. It messes up some of my other stuff, but you know, I just want to put this out there. So Martial could be a great striker to bring into this team as well, and you will still be under 77. If you look in the top left under Prem Daddies, it says rating 77, chemistry 100. So if you, you know, Martial's a little bit pricier, but I just kind of wanted to point that out there that you could also use that Martial. Um, you know, we I've got Rodrigo in this team right now. Rodrigo is a great cheap option with great pace, but Martial would also help out. Adama Traore, I feel, is great for managerial masterpiece. He's 79 rated, but 96 pace. Same thing with Sissoko, 79 rated, but 78 pace, just a rock in the midfield. We're also going to use Jabaman, so we're going to have Jabaman and Sissoko as our rocks in the midfield, just dominating things. We're going to have Almarone out there. He's got good pace, some good dribbling, good on the ball, so he's going to be able to run out there for us, kind of link play up from defense to attack. Then Samikas is an amazing managerial masterpiece left back. And Fredericks is an amazing managerial masterpiece right back. Now, one thing I do want to point out, I've been telling you guys for a while, make sure you hold on to your Chelsea Tomori cards. Because one thing that you may not know or you may be aware of, Tomori has transferred. Actually, I don't know. What, I should have looked at that. Is that a loan or full on transfer? I think it's a loan, actually. So, but Tomori's card in game, either way, regardless, is a Milan card. So, Tomori is, um, if, if you can't pack his Chelsea version anymore. So, let's see what Tomori is going for on the market now. And I've mentioned to you guys before make sure you hold on to some of these managerial masterpiece cards because you never know when they're going to come in, ha in handy. Now, I may not be able to see. Let's see. Okay, so there's a Chelsea version. So, he's still out there reasonably priced. You know, 5,000 coins and sounds like a lot for a 76 rated center back. There's no takers. You probably can get them a little bit cheaper based on this. So let's just see. But I, I recommend Tamori is and maybe, I would say Tamori and Ico Parra are the perfect managerial masterpiece center backs. Low rated, but they're great in game. Now I'm also recommending on this team, Joe Gomez. And the reason for that is when you go into these managerial masterpiece challenges so many times, somebody's going to have Lone Mbappe, especially if you're going against someone going for Benedetto, they're going to have 11 league gun players. It's likely they've either got Mbappe or Lone Mbappe. If you're playing with guys at the back that have 60 pace, Mbappe's just going to run right by them. Easy goal, game over, easy goal, game over. And, and it gets frustrating. But if you have Joe Gomez, if you have Tamori at the back, you can keep up with, with Mbappe. You can, you can uh, bottle them up and keep them keep them tied up then as far as goalkeeper goes i basically just look for height when you're looking at a low rated keeper hennessy is six foot six another one is big fraser forster is six foot seven he's 76 rated so i'm going with the hennessy so just makes that a little bit easier now one thing i want to point out we do have a lot of leeway here so if you've got like i said this is just kind of my base team right here i'm recommending if you just picked up fifa yesterday if you're someone that's got a really strong card oh, and i also wanted to mention I, I have gomez here kind of as a placeholder for Fof for fofana i did want to point that out as well so fofana because that's one of our big things that we are going for at the same time is getting Fofana. So also have Joe Gomez is great, but once you get to 84 Fofana, you're definitely going to want him out there in the team. And, you know, as you just grind through some of these. So 84 Fofana, you can see we're still 77 rating, 100 chemistry. We'll play Fofana. We'll play Tamori together, and that, that will work nicely. But if you're someone who's got, like, this player of the month, Hungman Son, in your team, you can put Hungman Son out here. So you can see that we're still 77 rating. So I've built in a lot of leeway. 
If you also want to go for Rainier at the same time, you can put Rainier on the subs bench. We're still 77 rated with 100 chemistry. If you got that Christian Pulisic, now remember, we do need goals with French players, but I'm just putting them out there just showing you. We can play Pulisic and Rodrigo up top. So we, I'm just saying you've got lots of wiggle room. So use this as a base and then maybe kind of take a look at what you've got. If you've got a Rashford, if you've got Mane, you know, then maybe you can kind of tweak it slightly. But one thing I do want to point out, make sure you're going for Fofana at the same time. It's just going to make life so much easier, and that's what makes that Nevis so much better. But let's take a quick look at that Nevis card. And honestly, I'm slightly disappointed with him. I think they could have done a little bit more. He's not a bad card by any means. Let me go to Concept Players On, but let's take a look at him. Now, I feel like, I mean, medium high work rates is great. Four star, four star is great. When you're looking here, you're like, yeah, I'm looking pretty good. And five foot 11 probably feels pretty good on the ball. Now, his pace is just a hint bit poor, but I think it would be usable. You know, you could put a shadow on him, and then you're thinking, okay, 90 acceleration, 85 sprint speed. I can live with that. I can live with that. Then his shooting, you know, that's fine. Look at that shot power. Look at those long shots. I can power up that long shot with Nevis. Not bad. Passing. Oh, my gosh. Nevis with his passing. Absolutely insane. But then you get to that agility and balance, and we're talking that he's not – Nevis is not a six foot three, six foot four CDM. He's a, not – tiny like Conte, but he's not big either. So I would prefer if he was, if that was 81 agility, 86 balance, I'd, I'd feel a lot better about this card. His defensive awareness is not through the roof by any means. It's not bad, but I think with the shadow, it goes up plus five. So his defensive awareness is only go up to 86. And the best role for Nevis is probably more as that ball winner because I don't really want him to be box to box at this stage because I don't know if he's going to have the pace to get forward and get back. Plus, he's medium-high work rate, so he's not really going to commit as much to the attack. He's got the work rates for more of that ball winner, pure CDM of it then. But what's great about him is his passing. And also what's great about him is his links. If you need to link up, if you've got that foot freeze left back, Adama Traore, and you need another link. If you've got Bruno and need that link, he's going to come in handy. But it's, it's a solid card, but it's just one that if it was just like a hint better in like one or two areas, like if his pace was 85-80, and his agility was 81, or yeah, 81, 86 for his agility and balance. I'd be like, oh my gosh, this card looks absolutely incredible. We've got to get him into the team. But as he is right there, he's just he's lacking just a little bit in a couple of areas. But like I said, worst case scenario, you've got an 89 rated Ruben Nevis that you can use for fodder later. You're also getting 86 Fofana and that 84 Fofana that you could also use as fodder at some stage if you need to. But Nevis, I think, could play pretty well in game. He's just going to be lacking just a hint bit. But for a free objective card, not bad by any means. But anyways, boys, this is going to wrap it up for now. Thanks so much for watching. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe down below. Check the description. Join my Discord server. Follow me on Twitter. All that good stuff. But I will see you guys soon. Take care. Bye.